Well, Yvonne, yes, be before we get on to that, there is some breaking news out of here at the moment. It's being reported that the, some hopeful news at least, that the IDF is saying that they believe the majority of the hostages who were taken into Gaza are alive. We don't know more information than that. We don't know where they are. And, and in fact, it's intriguing as to how they would have known that. Perhaps back channels. It could be through Qatar as a mediator. But at least that's something hopeful. IDF saying the majority of the hostages in Gaza are alive. In terms of timing, um, hard to know. It could be any time. Uh, I think now it's a matter of hours. My own feeling is that it will be tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon Australian time. I think it will be early tomorrow. Um, it's Shabbat here in, in Israel, and I think that it, that won't stop them in 2009. Uh, one of the other Israeli uh, war, uh, ground wars into Gaza, they went in on a Shabbat. Um, so I think it could happen tomorrow morning. Certainly the preparations are there. There's the 360,000 reservists who have been called up, a massive show of strength along the border here. I'm not far from the Gaza border in that direction. Certainly there's a lot of tanks and... Uh, soldiers there, uh, a lot of activity. So I'm expecting that it could be, I think certainly this weekend is the indications we're getting from here. And John, with that breaking news that Israel has said that the majority of hostages taken into Gaza, they believe are alive. How will that complicate their, their offensive, the ground offensive in Gaza? Yvonne, this has always been a real dilemma for Israel over the last two weeks since the Hamas invasion into southern Israel. What do they do? Their military aim is to go in and to try to um, finish off uh, Hamas as a fighting unit, as an entity, but having, it's believed to be 199 or 200 hostages in there, including as many as 30 children um, and 10 to 20 elderly people. Of course, Israel will want to try to do whatever it can to make sure they're alive. The Americans are certainly, work, certainly working back channels, but um, of course Israel will be very conscious. Whether they're getting information out of, out of the Gaza Strip, I'm not sure, but they will want to be doing what they can. I think they'll have a multi-pronged attack. I suspect they will have special forces, special operations people, whose entire missions will be going in with the army, but will be to try to find and rescue those hostages. And of course, hostage, uh, rescuing hostages can always be, you know, a difficult and a dangerous business. So hopefully, those, you know, as many of those hostages will be coming home alive as possible. Meanwhile, John, we know that 28 trucks are waiting to get into Gaza. What's holding them up since it was agreed that they are indeed allowed to cross the rougher border crossing? Yvonne, it's quite remarkable that the President of the United States was here two days ago and really that was his condition. That was his big announcement that I've managed to agree, get all parties to agree that the crossing, Rafa crossing into Egypt will be opened up. 48 hours on, there's still no indication of that. As always here, everybody's blaming everybody else. The Egyptians are saying that the Israelis have been not wanting to give a guarantee that they won't bomb that part of the Rafa crossing. They have bombed areas around that entrance, which is what's caused the potholes. And President Biden, on his way back to America on Air Force One, made the point interesting to hear a president getting into this level of detail that there are lots of potholes on the road and we have to fill them in to get those trucks across and he said that could take eight hours. What I find staggering is that here's the most powerful military in the world, the United States, and 48 hours after that announcement by the president, they still can't facilitate 28 trucks with desperately needed water. I mean, in Gaza, Gaza now, it's desperate, the situation. They've run out of painkillers and anaesthetics. They're operating on people without any of those. Doctors are saying children are screaming with pain because they're being operated from because of the bombings and there's no painkillers or anaesthetic. Uh, they've run out of water. They've run out of food. So the fact the United States of America can't get 28 trucks through the crossing into Gaza it says something, I think, about the world we're living in at the moment. Are we seeing any movement on that front at the, uh, at the crossing? At the moment, it's, it's closed dead, dead shut. Um, there are, of course, Australians there who are hoping to get out. <coughs> Excuse me. But no movement at the moment. We're hoping that in the next 24 hours or so, there may be a development. But, you know, it really poses the question of why. And finally, John, do you think we're already seeing the war spread 
uh, to more fronts beyond Gaza? Certainly that's the worry for Israel. Um, on the northern front, in that direction, of course, is Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. And the Israelis are very worried that should the ground war happen, should they, their troops go into Gaza in this direction, that Hezbollah, which has about 100,000 or so missiles in the south of Lebanon, hidden in the jungles there in the mountains, that they will activate them, or rather Iran, uh, and Hezbollah is a proxy of Iran, they're a Shia m military organisation, that Iran will give the order to try to use the fact that Israel is busy worrying about its southern front to try to take advantage of the northern front. At the same time, Israel is trying to to juggle the fact that in the West Bank, the occupied West Bank, there's more and more uh, unrest and upheaval, which Israel's trying to uh, deal with that as well. So in a way, Israel's fighting on three fronts. But only today we heard the news that some Hutu, uh, Houthi rebels in Yemen had, f had sent some drones in the direction, apparently, of Israel, and the American naval ships had shot them down. Now, just off here, this is the Mediterranean behind me, there are two US aircraft carriers, and their function is to try to make sure that should Iran or Hezbollah or militants in Syria or Houthis or anybody else um, decide to take advantage of this instability, then those two aircraft carriers may activate. Well, John Lyons, appreciate you updating us there. John Lyons reporting from Ashdod, and it also uh, brought us the breaking news that Israel believes the majority of hostages taken into Gaza, some 200 of them, are alive. John, thank you. Thanks, Yvonne.